Thank you everyone for logging into our 23rd annual Metro Children's Water Festival and the session today this morning is called Who Pollutes? And we will get started in just a couple minutes. Normally our festival is a field trip experience for fourth grade students that's held on the last Wednesday of September at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. And we changed to a virtual festival, of course, because of COVID-19 and wanting to keep everyone as safe as possible. My name is Paula Leopold and I work for Dakota County. And um, along with uh, this other group of people, I work on the Metro Children's Water Festival Planning Committee. And so we uh, put together this, uh, worked with our presenters, putting together this live presentation for you. And uh, uh, my work with Dakota County is in education and outreach and, and communication regarding water topics, as well as this other group of people here that you, you can see their names and their agencies that they work for. They're either um, counties or watersheds or state or federal agencies. And so we have this virtual festival um, that is, of course, this live class. And our classes are streamed to YouTube. And you can also then watch a recording of this if you care to watch it again later, or if you have some friends that were not able to join us um, right now, if they would like, if you'd like to share with them to watch it later. We also have some other pre-recorded videos and also some lesson plans that you or your teachers may be interested in. And um, as I mentioned, we're streaming this to you live, streaming it to YouTube, but it will also be available on the Children's Water Festival webpage or through the Children's Water Festival webpage, and that's metrocwf.org, and you can see that on the screen right there. So this morning, I am very proud to introduce uh, Kelly Strins, who is going to be uh, talking to us today about who polluted. And so with that, um, I just want to let you know that Kelly works for Dakota County Parks. She's a naturalist and with outdoor education specialist. And I'm sure she'll give us a little bit more background about her as well. And so with that, Kelly, take it away. Thanks so much, Paula. I'm really excited to be here with all of you uh, virtually, of course. Um, but thank you for having me and thank you for that introduction. Uh, like Paula said, my name is Kelly. Um, I'm one of the naturalists for Dakota County Parks. Um, and right now I'm at our office at Lebanon Hills, uh, where we're based, but we do programming in all of our parks throughout Dakota County, um, and we offer programming for youth as well as adults and families, everything in between. Um, so today, we'll get started. We have our Who Polluted? So as all of you are probably well aware, Minnesota has a lot of lakes. We have a lot of rivers. We have a lot of streams. Um, and all of those contribute to a really great, robust ecosystem that we have in our state and in our metro area. Um, and our activity today, uh, usually like I, we do this um, with all of you helping, but um, as we go along, I'll try to keep an eye on my chat, um, the question and answer section, if you want to type something, um, I'll be asking you some questions so you can write yes or no um, or raise your hand if that's an, I think that's a button you have as an option as well. So hopefully we'll keep this interactive and fun um, and talk a little bit about who polluted the lake. So um, I'd love for you to all imagine right now a lake or a river or stream or a pond, whether it's near your house or by your school, um, maybe in a park that you really like, maybe it's somewhere that you go um, on vacation with family that you, um, just a body of water that you uh, know and can visualize in your head. So this uh, glass fishbowl that we have here is gonna represent that body of water that you have in your head. And so this is our miniature lake today. And as we tell the story together, we're going to talk about how this lake changes due to impacts from lots of different people. So everyone feel ready to start our story and learn about who polluted. Um, did I hear? Paula, did you want to add something? Um, nope. 
Okay. Nope, sorry. No, no, no worries. Um, okay, I see people are saying hello, welcome. Yes, so thank you for joining, I guess, I, again. Um, and let's get started. So in our story today, imagining your body of water, it's summertime and we have some fisher people who are out, they um, are fishing on the shore, they're enjoying their time, maybe they're getting some sunnies. Um, I don't know if people wanna type in there, do people like to fish or if you like to fish, type that in. Um, I know that I do a little bit of fishing in the summertime as well. So these fisher um, people are out, they are um, casting their lines and one person gets it tangled up in the tree. And so this tree uh, is a little bit high up and they decide, well, we're just gonna cut our line and we're gonna leave it. Great, I see some people are saying they like to fish. So you know that that happens, your line gets tangled. So these fisher people, um, they just cut their line and then at the end of the day, they head out with their fish. Well, they left their line and maybe the wind starts blowing and eventually, which we have here in our first canister, is some fishing line. So you guys can see this. And this makes its way into the lake and it's a little bit hard to see, but it is floating there in our lake. So now we have some fishing line in the lake, which it's a little bit of fishing line, but if lots of fishing fishermen are doing that and there's a lot of lake um, pollution, suddenly animals like fish and frogs are getting tangled in that fishing line. Um, but I have a question for you all. So looking at, this is, our, this is our start of our lake. There's some fishing line in there, but would you swim in this lake right now? Just looking at what it looks like. Would you maybe just go for a swim or go wading in this lake? I'm curious to hear what people think. I think that I would probably still go fishing or excuse me, swimming in this lake. The water's still pretty clear. Yeah, some people are saying no. Uh, a few people are saying maybe I go swimming. Okay, so sort of mix. Maybe some people would, maybe some people would not. Um, I'm just looking at my text. Okay, our uh, chat, I wanna make sure I'm catching people. So a lot of people are saying yes, some people are saying no. Okay, thanks everyone for the responses. So this is our lake. We got a little bit of fishing line in there. That's pretty common. A lot of the metro lakes in our area, unfortunately do have a lot of fishing line. So let's keep on with our story. This is our next family. So they decide it's a beautiful fall day. They're gonna go out, they're gonna go picnicking next to the lake, look at the beautiful leaves. Uh, I imagine that lots of you have seen that the leaves are changing. So they're out enjoying their, their lunch. And at the end of it, they go and they have a bunch of trash from lunch and they notice that the trash can is completely full. But, you know, they're busy, they need to get going, they have another thing to get to. Um, and so they just throw their trash on the top of the trash can, even though it's kind of overflowing. And later that night, as it is likely to do this time of year, it gets very, very windy, very windy. And the wind blows some trash out. Can you guess where it's gonna go? So here we have our trash. Oops, this is a little hard to do two, with just two hands. Usually you guys are the ones helping us do this story. So now we have our trash. You can see that's floating in our lake. It has uh, blown out of the trash can. They tried to throw it away, but it uh, instead blew out. It didn't make it totally into the trash can and now it's in the lake. So now we have some trash in the lake. So we have fishing wire, we have trash. Things are starting to build up in our lake a little bit. Okay, so another, family is out and they are raking leaves. I can imagine, I wish we could see rays of hands, um, but if anyone has done some leaf raking yet this season, or if you're about to do some leaf raking, whether it's in your yard or um, in your neighborhood, but yes, someone is out raking leaves and they decide this year, they're not going to bother. They're not going to put them in a bag and bag them all up. They're just going to put them in the in the street. And so they think, oh, the street sweeper will take care of it. It'll get taken care of. Well, unfortunately, the street sweeper doesn't come by. The leaves don't get picked up. 
And one day when it rains, all that water goes down into, do you guys have a guess? I'm gonna give people a second to guess. Where do you think that all those leaves are getting washed down into? I'm gonna wait just a minute on the chat to see. I see drains, the lake. Yep, drain, lake. Yep, all correct answers, you guys. Yep, the storm drain. So those big grates that you see um, on the, like, next to a sidewalk by the gutters, um, those are storm drains. So those go right into our water system, um, like our lakes and rivers. They don't get cleaned like our um, sewer drains do. It just runs all the way into our lakes and rivers. So we have here our, uh, our leaf collection from our person who didn't rake. And so this person has now added some leaf litter into our lake. So now I will ask the question again, what do you guys think? Looking at this, we got some leaf litter, we got some trash, we got some angler wire. Would people go fishing or swimming in this? Just curious. Some people say no. Lots of people are saying no. Too icky. The water's kind of icky. So that's what our lake looks like right now. And with the leaves, though, I like to mention... So I have a piece of leaf right here. This is just like a leaf you'd rake from your yard, falling from the tree. Maybe people are asking, well, don't leaves normally fall into the lake, right? Maybe it's just a normal lake and there's going to be trees around it. Don't the leaves fall in there? And the answer is, yeah, definitely. The leaves are going to fall into the lake normally. But when we have all these houses that are around us and all of their leaves from their yards, it's not just one house, it's maybe 10 or 20 or 30, 50, 100 houses. And if all those leaves are going into the lake, that's a lot more leaves than the lake can normally handle. And so the lake gets really mucky. It can get a lot of um, organic matter that breaks down. And so like, you know, if you've walked in a lake and it's kind of mushy in the bottom, that's what starts to happen is the lake just gets too full and it can't handle all of that uh, leaf litter. So, that was our, our raking family. Okay, the next one, you guys are gonna freak out. I'm sure of it, everyone always does. So we have some kids that are out swimming in the lake. It's summertime, we've gone back to summer. It's not like fall right? it, like it is now. The lake is nice and warm. And a sibling is with their little brother or sister and the sibling comes over to their brother, older brother and sister and says, I really have to go pee. I really have to go to the bathroom. Can we go home? Like, I gotta go now. And the older sibling says, no, I'm busy. I'm hanging out with my friends. So about 10 minutes later, the older sibling comes back and says, okay, fine. Like, let's go home. We can take you to the bathroom. And the little sibling says, well, I don't need to go anymore. So what do you think happened? That's right, our little sibling peed in the lake. So normally that, yep, you guys are saying, ew, I know, pretty gross, right? So now we have a yellow lake, someone peed in it. They added more nitrogen to it. Um, and that is not something that's normally occurring in our lakes. Let's see. Someone asked, Logan, I am just uh, wanna make sure that I see your questions. Um, that is muck bad for lakes? Cause at your cabin, some there's some at the bottom of the lake. Um, no, it's not necessarily bad. Most, um, most lakes have a layer at the bottom that is kind of mucky and silty when you step in it. And that's normal. Lakes are going to have some um, organic matter that settles at the bottom that um, is going to decay over time and, and just turn into soil. Um, so no, that's not necessarily bad. And it's also a place for like animals, like turtles will go and bury themselves down in there, frogs to sort of hibernate over winter or do torpor. 
So that's okay. But when you start to have lots and lots and lots of leaves, um, then the, the leaf litter and all the organic matter starts to build up really fast. And then the lake gets like too full too quickly and the water levels change. Um, but normally, yes, a lake does have um, some leaf litter in it and some like a sort of decaying layer at the bottom that is normal. So good question. So I see lots of people are really freaking out about this pea uh, water. It is just yellow food coloring. Don't freak out. Uh, it's just for our experiment here today and our visual. Uh, so it's just food coloring. So don't worry. Nothing too gross. Um, okay. So our lake is getting filled up with all these different inputs from all these different people using the lake using uh, in nature and um, living nearby um, a, a body of water. Um, okay, I see another question, where does the muck come from? So the, the like mucky, dirty layer, um, some of it is silt, sort of like the really fine layer of dirt and clay. Um, and then some of it is actually like leaves and things that are breaking down and turning into soil. So that when we say like muck, at the bottom of the lake, that's what that kind of layer is. It's just things that are decaying, that are breaking down, which is totally normal, just like how you would find soil and leaf litter in a forest. It's just the bottom of the lake like that. Um, someone else asked about goose poop. We're gonna come back to that question. I'm gonna write that down right now and we'll come back to goose poop because that is a great question. What about the goose poop? So hold on to that and we'll come back to it. Okay, should we continue our story, everyone? I think so. So nearby this lake, this Imagine Lake that you have in your head, we have a construction site. So maybe someone's building a building or house and they're bringing in lots of sand and dirt to build the foundation of that house. And so this company decided not to put a barrier in. Um, and so one night, as it happens in Minnesota, we have a huge rainstorm. And all this water comes and it washes down the uh, a lot of the silt and the sand and the gravel from the construction site. So this is stuff that they brought in. It was not part of the landscape. It was brought in by the construction company. And now it's starting to run off into the lake. So I have here, you guys ready? This is my favorite part. Yes. Okay. You can see it got kind of cloudy. Lots of rocks and sands. And so suddenly there's a lot more uh, cloudiness and sand and rocks in this lake from that construction site. It looks like Ethan asked, is sand fine for the lake? Kind of just like the question you guys had about the leaves and, and things like that um, is, a little bit of sand and rocks are natural. That's part of, of the ecosystem, right? But when you have a lot of extra coming from outside sources that are not naturally occurring when humans put them there and they start to go on the lake, it starts to fill up the bottom of the lake. And if that lake uh, gets filled, the depth of the lake starts to shrink. So think about that. If you had, if this starts to fill up here, and there's a lot of gravel, suddenly there's less and less water area for the fish to be swimming, for the uh, turtles and things like that. All of those things um, fill up the lake and leave less water and less area for animals, um, changes the oxygen levels. So it is changing. Um, there is, yeah, so there is sand and lake naturally, but when we have lots of extra things that are being brought in, the lake can't handle that. It's kind of like, eventually if we started filling this up and we had all these things in here, there wouldn't be enough room for the water, right? We would just, if we kept filling it with sand, eventually there would just be sand in this bowl and there wouldn't be any water. So that's kind of the same idea of, if you think about it on a big scale with lakes, we don't wanna have um, all those extra things being added. So that's where the gravel, and sometimes with construction sites, there's other chemicals that come into the lake too. I see, okay, um, an engine of the boat with a gas, yes. 
we will also get to that question. We have another um, a boater, a boating person um, and car person that comes up in our story. So let's, we'll talk about that in just a minute. I see your question though. Engine of the boat with some gas, what happens? Okay, so now we have our sand, we have river, uh, or excuse me, a lot of different things in our lake. Um, and in our story, now we have a golf course nearby. So um, the golf course is, you know, down the street from the lake. And as golf courses, you may or may not know, they need a lot of fertilizer and a lot of um, herbicide, which kills the weeds to keep the grass like really green and really perfect all season long. And they water it a lot. So this caretaker has just recently applied fertilizer to the um, to the grass and is trying to um, keep the grass nice and green. But just like in our other parts of our story, when it rains or people are watering their yards, some of that turns into runoff, which means that it doesn't go into the soil um, and instead goes into the um, drain system like we talked about with the leaves. So here we have the caretaker and we have our green fertilizer has made its way into our lake. So suddenly our lake turned really green. Um, and so our lake has a lot of extra fertilizer, which means it has a lot of nitrogen. And who in the chat section uh, can tell me if you have seen a lake or a pond with like a lot of green scum on the top, like a lot of algae. I feel like most people have probably seen that at some point. Yeah, yes. Lots of you guys are saying yes, we've seen this. Um, so again, this was some more food coloring that I added. I added just gravel and sand before that, if you're wondering what I put in the bowl. Um, but yeah, lots of us have seen really scummy lakes where there's just like pond weed on top and it's all green, right? Really, really green. And that's because there's too much nitrogen, too much fertilizer, maybe coming from outside sources. And it's causing all this stuff to grow on the top, which doesn't help the lake because then there's less oxygen in the water. Um, so turtles and fish have a harder time to breathe. Um, and it just doesn't, it changes the chemistry of the lake a little bit. Okay, so now I see this. Um, would you guys swim in this? We're not even done with our story, but here we are. Would we swim in this water? What do you guys think? I'll hold it one more time. Lots of people are saying no. People are saying ew, never, yes, no. So some people, few people are saying, um, but most of us maybe would say, no, thank you. Swimming in that water. But do the ducks and the fish and the turtles, they don't have a choice. This is their home. They don't, they can't choose whether or not they want to live here. I mean, maybe the ducks could go to a different lake, but the fish and the frogs are like, eh, maybe not. Eventually it may not be such a, a great place to live. Okay, so we have another scenario in our, our story, our pond story. So we have someone who um, has a leaky car, or we'll go back to that question of um, maybe there's a boat on the lake that has, it's leaking a little bit, maybe a little oil or a little bit of gas is getting into the water. And so that person who has a leaky um, car from, um, that's leaking a little bit of oil. Again, that's like on the roads, all that when it rains is getting swept into the storm drain and then going into the lakes. Um, if that boat were to um, leak, that is also going into the water system. And that's definitely, we know that those types of things, especially oils, are really, really bad for fish and for amphibians like frogs and toads. So you guys ready? Our science lake, here we go. 
that's our oil and that's our gas going into the lake. So I'll just show you guys that one more time. It's all kind of mixing in there. We have that oily substance now in the lake. Kind of gross. Um, let's see. Lottie's asking, can there be extra plants that grow in a lake naturally? Yeah, definitely. There's a, um, every year, it's pretty normal for lakes to have some amount of like that green, uh, like lily pads or duckweed. Those are all things that grow in the lake naturally. But when you see a lake that's like, cause you know, we've all seen them, right? Like it's just green. Like there's, you don't even see the water. You just see plants because it's so much algae growing. That's when you know that it's a little bit unhealthy and that there's maybe too much um, nitrogen and phosphorus in the lake, too many extra things that have gotten added. And so the plants are just kind of going crazy um, and there's too many in the lake. But yes, there are lots of things that grow naturally every year in the lake. Um, and if the system is sort of normal and there's not too many extra pollutants like we have here, then yeah, then lake will will have some lake weed and other types of plants. But it's when there's too many plants that we know it's unhealthy. So thank you for your question, Lottie. Okay. Yeah, and Anna, uh, looks like you asked, are lily pads okay? Um, yeah, again, lily pads are, you know, some of them can be kind of invasive, but um, they're, it's sort of about how many, right? If there's the whole lake is covered in lily pads, that might not be as healthy, but if there are lily pads, they do grow in lakes and that's okay. Um, and let's see, we have a question about do fish and frogs die when the lake is green? Um, they don't necessarily die um, just because the lake is green, no. Um, but again, it makes it a less comfortable place for them to live. Um, and, you know, can you imagine like trying to, if you're like a little frog and you're like trying to swim through all that algae, that'd probably be kind of hard. They can manage it um, and they do adapt to a degree, but um, it can make their lives a little bit harder and, and not as comfortable. Um, okay, oil and leaves. Yeah, so um, yeah, oil is definitely when we have car oil and boat oil and gas that can hurt um, plants in the lake, absolutely. Um, and, and a question about invasive plants and animals. Definitely, we know, um, I won't get into too many things about invasives for this topic. Um, but yes, we do have different invasive plants and animals and they are not um, generally good for our environment because they tend to take over, right? They have, um, they're so good at growing um, that they will um, take over an area and kind of push out all the other species that are trying to live there. So yes, invasives um, do impact our both of our lakes and our other forests and uh, native prairies. Uh, will metal affect the water? Um, heavy metals are really bad for, so things like mercury and other toxic metals um, can be really bad for our lakes, definitely in our soils. Um, that can get into fish and into the amphibians, into their bodies, so that can be really bad. And it can also affect us if we go fishing and we're eating fish that have heavy metals in them. That can be really bad for humans. So definitely um, metals um, like mercuries and things like that are, um, we want to keep those out of our groundwater, um, our drinking water, our lakes. Um, absolutely. Okay. Um, perfect. So we have, you guys have some really great questions. I really appreciate all these ideas. Um, we will get to the question about human waste in just a minute. Okay, we have our lake here. We have two more inputs, as it were, two more polluters. So this next person um, is, let's say they're washing their car or their boat, uh, could be in the parking lot by, um, by the lake, it could be at their house again, because remember, even if you're at your house and you're far away from a lake, whatever goes into your driveway and into the road 
is going to ultimately make its way um, into the water stream because it's going into those um, drain drain sewers, right? And um, that can be really bad. So we have our science pour again, and this is kind of hard to see, but it's bubbling because it's soap. So uh, you know, think about detergents and soaps, things people would be um, uh, putting on their car or their boat to wash it. So that has all gone down. The storm drain is now in our lakes. So we have more a sudsy lake. You might think, oh, that's cleaning the lake, but those are chemicals that are not helping the lake. Um, and final, our final story. So this gets back to the question, our final polluter, as it were. Um, how many people, can you guys tell me in the chat, do you have a dog? Do you have a pet at home, but probably a dog is the question. This comes back to our goose question, our uh, human waste question. You guys probably know. Okay, so a few people have dogs. Some people don't. That's okay. Um, someone's getting a dog. A few people say yes. Okay, so... We have our dog walkers out in the park. We have plenty of those all the time. And these people forgot to bring a, a doggy bag with them to pick up their dog waste. And so they just let their dog go to the bathroom and they don't pick it up and don't put it in the trash where it's supposed to go. And instead our dog waste, just like the goose poop and all those other byproducts, makes its way into the lake. Those are raisins, don't freak out. So now we have some dog waste in our uh, lake. So just like goose poop, uh, dog waste especially, um, someone asked about human waste, all of those things have a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus. They're adding a lot of extra chemicals into our lake in that form of runoff. And again, those are things that are causing all that extra algae to grow and it's changing the lake so that there's less oxygen, too many plants, and it's a less healthy environment. So yes, um, you know, goose and other animals do go to the bathroom in the forest, but we have a lot of extra geese. Um, Canadian geese are a little bit invasive and so they do add a lot of extra um, waste into the water systems, but dog waste is a huge issue, um, especially in the metro area. Um, they know that they've tested lakes and that a lot of the testing shows that there's, uh, it actually goes back to dog food and they can find that there's kind of a chemical composition that shows that there's a lot of dog food, which means there's a lot of dog waste in our lakes. So all together, we have all these different people that polluted. Was it just one person that polluted this lake? Or was it a lot of different people who polluted? Do you guys have an answer? I'll give you guys a second to think about that. So who polluted the lake? I'll get to the chlorine question in just a second. Someone said we polluted the lake, right? Everyone, so many people, yes, lots of different people. Us, everyone, yeah, you guys are totally on it. So not one, it wasn't just one person who did all of these things. It was everyone's individual, all those different people from the fishermen, the family that was picnicking, people walking their dog, the person that didn't fix their leak on their car, uh, the person that was washing their car, the person who was raking their leaves into the street. Everyone contributed and everyone had a play a piece to play in polluting this body of water. So it wasn't just one person. It was all those tiny actions of lots and lots of lots of different people who contributed to changing this lake. So thank you for joining me in this story. I want to answer this question. Um, two questions I see up here quick, and then we'll do a little bit of follow up. So biodegradable soap, I don't know enough about that to actually answer that question. Um, I would have to do more research to see if 
biodegradable soaps are really biodegradable or what their impact is on the environment. So good question. And then as a scientist, I'd encourage you to go research and figure out, um, maybe see what you can find about that. Um, chlorine, is that bad for the lake? Um, yeah, in large amounts, chlorine is definitely harmful to a lake. Um, its whole job is, to, when we put it in pools, is to kill like bacteria and things like that. So definitely, um, we do not want chlorine in our lakes. Um, okay, I think Lauren, is your question that what do I do with this water once I'm done with it? Um, and where will it go? That's a great question. So yes, this is my demonstration. So when we pour water down our drains or we flush the toilet, that water goes through a filtration system and gets cleaned so that we can drink the water and it, it gets recycled and cleaned. Water, if I were just to pour this outside and put it like in the street and it went down the storm drain, then it would go right back into the lakes. So there is a difference. Um, what gets put outside like on our streets and our roads and our sidewalks, um, sidewalk salt for the winter, all of those things get swept out when it rains or when it snows and then it, it melts, that all goes into the storm drains. And so storm drains are different. They go right into our lake system. They, the water doesn't get cleaned. If it goes into our sink or our toilet or our showers, that water is actually going back into a city system where it is getting cleaned. So I hope that helps answer that question about where this water will be going down uh, the sink drain. But I'll take out the trash and the wire and reuse that. So those things won't make it into our water system. Good question. So um, what do you guys think? I would love to see in the chat in our last few minutes to think about what could have, pe what, um, could have the people done differently? How could they have changed their action? Thinking about all those eight different people and what they were doing, walking their dog, fishing, picnicking, raking leaves, uh, doing golf course care, were there some things they could have done differently to maybe have a different, better impact on the lake? Um, think about that for a minute, but thinking through all the different people that had this impact, what are some things that people could have done differently? Like what could the fishermen have done or fisherwomen done differently when they were fishing to help the lake? So use their brains, okay. Um, they could just be more careful. Okay, use a trash can to put away their um, angler stuff. Um, the dog person could come back and pick up their dog waste and throw it away. Definitely um, use a fishing net for a trash can. So bring your own um, trash can. Be more cautious. Um, be better about just being more careful. So if you're like uh, raking your leaves, picking those leaves up instead of putting them in the street. Um, if you, you know, are doing some construction work, making sure you put barriers up so that those sand and gravel isn't going into the lakes and rivers. Um, definitely washing the car, you know, making sure if you go to a car wash, it actually is a lot more efficient than washing in your driveway. If you have that option, um, that way the soap gets recycled instead of going down into the drains. Um, and then just picking up your trash, right? When you're out picnicking or you're out with your family, um, if the trash can is full at the park, sometimes that happens. It's a busy weekend. Just pack that trash out with you and bring it home and throw it away in your trash can at home if you have room. Um, and just bring it with you and put it in a bag so that it doesn't um, end up in our lakes and rivers. Um, yeah, just be more thoughtful. You guys totally have the right idea, but we know that all of us contribute, all of us have a part to play, and all of us. Um, can 
can make a difference on how on the health of our lakes, um, streams, and rivers. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate uh, you all coming to this virtual event. It was really fun for me, and I really enjoyed all of your questions, all of your thoughtful answers, um, and your contributions. So thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Kelly. That was fantastic to learn all of the, about the things that we can do to, to um, make our lakes and rivers and our environment a lot cleaner. So thank you too for to the participants for joining in today. <clears throat> when when um, you'll see an evaluation when the webinar is over and we'd really like you to take just a few minutes to complete that and submit it to us if you can. And again, be sure to take a look at the a website, the metrocwf.org because there's more festival opportunities, whether it's another live class that we have coming up later today or tomorrow. And there are um, recordings of these live classes that we've had this week. And you can see some other videos or even some lesson plans. And there's another page on our website called resources. And there's other fun water related education materials there as well. So again, thank you for attending. Hope it's been great and see you next time. Bye. Thanks everyone.